All right, good evening, everybody. My name is Eric Nordlander. I'm an engineering partner at Google Ventures, and I won The Price is Right by hacking it. Now, this story begins back when I was in college, and like most college students, I was a huge procrastinator. So most of my mornings would be spent watching TV and doing problem sets that were due later that day. And of course, my favorite television program was The Price is Right, at that point hosted by the one and only Bob Barker. Now, if you don't know The Price is Right, very simple game show. You have four contestants that are selected from the studio audience that try to guess the price of a product. The one that gets the closest without going over wins that product gets to come up on stage and participate in a pricing game. And the show culminates with the showcase showdown. That's where you have two finalists who compete to guess the, uh, the price of a collection of prizes, like cars, trips, gas grills, you name it. The one that guesses the closest without going over wins all the prizes and the glory and gets to go home very happy. Now, after watching the show every single day, I began to notice a pattern. A lot of the prizes repeat themselves. And actually, these prizes are actually paid placements. They're sponsors who put the prize on the show. The show is really an hour-long commercial. And so you might be wondering, who are these companies that are sponsoring the prices right? Well, all you really have to do is look at the uh, credits, and all the companies are right there. And it's not hard to figure out what these guys are marketing, and then from there, you can just use the internet to figure out the prices of those products. So we built a database of the prices on the Price is Right. <laughs> and you know what? We decided we should go on the show. So th there's a little bit of a scaling problem, though. You have too many prices for one person to remember. You've got rice, you've got cars, you've got all kinds of crazy stuff. But you know what? The show format actually helps you out in this case. While you're playing a pricing game, they encourage you to ask the audience for help. And you can stand there and ask the audience for as much help as you want. It's not a live show. You can just do it, and they'll cut it down to an appropriate length. OK, still, still too much for one person to remember, right? So what did we do? We did what any good database architect would do. We distributed the prices among all of my friends. One person was furniture. Another person was domestic cars. Another person was food. And so we had a walking, talking price database for the prices right. Great. OK, so we got tickets to be on the show. We rented an RV. We drove 3,000 miles from Boston to LA to be contestants on the prices right. OK, well, we still have to go from the studio audience to contestant row. So how do you do that? Well, we knew that the producers would interview us as we were standing in line to get into the program. OK, well, what is Bob like? He likes military in uniform, and he likes college students with crazy t-shirts. So we made crazy t-shirts that said, we drove 3,000 miles from MIT to go see Bob Barker. OK, awesome. So we only had one more thing to do, to go through security. By the way, Price is Right's got way better security than anything the TSA has to offer. They actually <laughs> took away all our cell phones and electronics. They searched us for cheating devices. That's fine. We didn't have any of that. It was all in our heads. And then we walked into the studio. We took our seats inside Bob Barker uh, Auditorium. And before he even came out, we heard the most exciting words on television. Come on down. You're the next contestant on The Price is Right. And it was my co-conspirator sitting right next to me who got up, ran down, and was on contestant's row. I couldn't believe it. It was really happening. And you know what? The first prize was something we knew. It was a pool table. He made an awesome guess, but unfortunately, he got sniped. He got outbid by a dollar. That's OK. Two games later, he got a correct bid, came up on stage, and it kicked into action. We were telegraphing prices, and he actually won. He went all the way through to the showcase and guessed correctly within $1,000 and won the entire thing. Seconds later, I'm up on stage. I'm shaking hands with Bob. I'm carrying him around like a big nerd football team. I could not believe it. We actually won the whole thing. Now, this was awesome. My favorite memory from college by far. But there are a couple lessons. There are a couple lessons I just want to share with you guys that are really important. First of all, you know, we could have just relied on luck to get chosen from the studio audience, but we really took the extra effort of making these t-shirts, doing the research. And whenever you can stack the deck in your favor, you, it only takes a little bit of luck to win. Second of all, sharding was hugely important, right? <laughs> whenever you can take information and distribute it among different people or different systems and reassemble it later, you can do powerful stuff. Google's advertising system, which I actually worked on for several years, functions this way. Sharding really is king. And last but not least, if you're going to do something inside in your life, you have to take risks. It would have been the easiest thing in the world just to sit there, smiling, doing our problem sets, and just laughing about the pattern of the show. But we actually created a system and drove cross country, ended up winning the whole thing on national television. And honestly, that's what I love about my job. <laughs> Every single day, I work with awesome entrepreneurs who find interesting opportunities and take huge risk in order to pursue them, hopefully to change the world for, for the best. And so that's what I want to know from all of you. What are you going to hack, disrupt, or start up? Please tell me about it. I'm EJN on Twitter. Thanks.